Uh, I'm Kevin Killingsworth. I uh, work with Automatic, um, specifically the WooCommerce team. Um, and if you want to contact me, I'm Coder Kevin pretty much everywhere. Um, on Twitter, on GitHub, uh, CoderKevin.com. So, and uh, that's enough about me. <laughs> All right, so um, let's talk about customization. So. Um, Everybody here, or a lot of people here, have heard about Gutenberg. Um, you probably know that it is coming. Um, we're targeting, uh, the WordPress team is, tar is targeting 5.0 um, for Gutenberg to be released into core. Um, and so far, I haven't seen any wailing and gnashing of teeth in here yet. So <laughs> um, this has been a controversial thing, um, right? So just like any big change in WordPress, um, it's there's always controversy and, and uh, um, you know, some fear, that sort of thing. And, and there are some things to think about, some things to look at, but I think there are a lot of benefits as well. Um, so right now, in WordPress, if you want to customize your site, I'm guessing that a lot of people here have some experience at different levels of customizing a WordPress site. So what do you have available to you right now? So the first two easy ones are uh, themes and plugins, right? Oops, that is not what I intended. There we go. Um, so, there are themes and plugins, right? Those are easy. Um, hey, I'm going to pick a theme. This looks nice. I'll install that. Um, yeah, and then there's the customization of those themes, right? Right. Um, there are plugins for things when you need like more data and you know more more features and, and stuff like that, and that's great too. Um, I think I was just talking to somebody else. You know, it seems like so many themes these days come with like a bevy of plugins that they require and all of that stuff, too. Um, so I guess there's that, um, but if you want to get any more down in, into the customization stuff, it's not long before you're down in this area, right? How long, how much can you actually customize a site without knowing a bit of CSS? Yeah, not much. Yeah, yeah. so you, you get forced into that CSS stuff pretty quick. And um, has anybody experienced any uh, fear of uh, CSS? You know, like, oh my gosh, what do I do with the CSS stuff? I, I know I have, and I'm a developer. Yeah, definitely. I, it can be pretty scary. And then, you know, uh, you tweak with it, and then sprawling, you know, this thing pops out there, and, you know, all the other stuff. Um, so anyways, HTML and CSS. CSS is probably one of the first things that you'll end up touching in the customizer or elsewhere. Um, you know, before you know it, you're writing a child theme, and you know, oh boy, right? <laughs> um, then, then you get down to the actual uh, meat of the code, and you're messing around with PHP and JavaScript itself. Um, I mean, almost all, I mean, so many plugins out there do both, right? They have to have PHP and JavaScript because you have to have something for validation, or you know, maybe the more advanced ones are actually doing some API calls on there to speed up the interface, stuff like that. So this is a lot to keep track of. Um, but uh, some of this, actually, we can look at solving with Gutenberg. In fact, some of these reasons for this customization are the very reasons why uh, Gutenberg has come into existence. Um, because it is really difficult to move stuff around where you want it and make it look the way you want it to without knowing CSS. Right? That's, that's one of the main focuses, uh, one of the first ones. So um, right now, uh, Gutenberg, the new editor, is actually available as a feature plugin if you go on WordPress.org um, or just you know go to your plugins and add add one. Um, you can install the Gutenberg feature plugin and it will replace your editor with the Gutenberg editor. Um, it actually does have a little extra link. You can go back to the classic editor if you want to um, and, and use that even on just while you're editing something. But um, even just downloading this and installing it and trying it out. Um, would definitely help out the people who are working on Gutenberg. If you run into any problems, WordPress.org forums or your friend, you know, let people know. Because uh, I mean, the the WordPress team is looking at putting this in um, in 5.0, and so it's probably good to try it out, not on a production site, you know, try it out on on something else, and uh, you know, give it a try and see what happens. So there there's still some growing pains um, that we're working through, um, but. Um, by and large, it's, it's uh, getting pretty exciting here. So, as I mentioned, in 5.0, and there is currently a classic editor plugin um, for those who uh, either uh, have problems with the Gutenberg uh, editor when it comes in in 5.0, or if you just don't want it, 
um, you can go back to the classic editor um, with that with that plugin. So let's get back uh, let's get back to the actual editor and talk about that a little bit more. So here's a quick little screenshot. So this is actually what the Gutenberg editor looks like. So when you edit a post, it is something very similar to this. So it looks a little bit different than the current editor, right? And um, so you've got your document. So if you, you can't see it here, but if you can click on that where it says document next to block, that actually gives you your familiar controls of publishing and making it private and you know that sort of stuff. Um, you know, public, publicizing and all that. Um, and, but you've got a little tab here for the block. And so for each block, it actually comes up with a list of uh, options that you can choose on here. So right there, you can actually choose, um, not only can you choose the justification and all that sort of stuff on a paragraph, but you can choose the background color and the font and you know, the, the font color and all of that sort of thing uh, there as well. So it gives you um, a lot more options on these, but these controls are not right in your face all the time. In fact, if you click away from that paragraph block, the little things above it go away, the uh, block thing on the right goes away, and so um, kind of gets out of your out of your way as you're typing and you're editing. So, you hear? Uh, I think you probably heard me say block at least five to ten times already, um, and that's because uh, I mean, that is the basic part of, uh, that's the most basic common part of Gutenberg is the, the Gutenberg blocks. Uh, there is currently an API to develop your own blocks. So you can make them do whatever you want. Um, we've got some different options I'll mention um, here in a minute about what you can do. But the most basic ones you can see here, um, so you've got your heading and your paragraph and your list. You can see there's uh, one here There's for ninja forms, um, gallery, other stuff like that. So when you uh, when you you can make a plugin that will install blocks that will be available in the editor for anyone. So um, let's try this out. So there's a really cool site here. So this is actually on the front end. Um, Tom Norwell put this together. Um, and hacked it together. In fact, I'm not even exactly sure how he made it happen. But this is actually the front end of a WordPress site. But he got the editor here. And so you can see as I mouse over, I can see different parts, different blocks here. Um, and I can just go ahead and edit. Right? And I can just type it in. Here's that link. I can add a new block here. I can also move blocks up and down. So I can put this up here. <coughs> so we've got some different options here. If you look here, so this is expanding, but I can put it on the right side or left. And so this is just an example. These are all of the basic, the most basic blocks here. Um, and, the, and these will come with WordPress core, uh, all of the basics. But the really exciting part is what blocks can, can the rest of us add? What can we all do with this? Right? Are we going to have a Yoast block? Are we going to have an a advanced uh, custom fields uh, block? Right? I can tell you they're already working on these um, as of right now. You know, WooCommerce block. Right? You know, so one of the biggest things, one of the first things that we did is um, in WooCommerce, we have a product block. And so in here, if I want to go here, I can actually hit this plus button and I could type you know, product. And I can actually find that block here and insert it. And then I could select the product that I want. And then on that page, it will actually show that product with a buy button or an add to cart button right there. So um, yeah, you can put things in columns separators, all that stuff. Yes, yes, that's exactly the way it would happen, yeah. So WooCommerce, um, as a plugin, when, it, uh, when you install it and it activates, it will actually add hooks to install the, uh, you know, the, the blocks that it has. 
Yeah, yeah, so short codes, that's a, that's a direct analog between what we're trying to do here. Yeah, definitely. All right, so what's first on the list, or uh, first on the hit list, I guess, uh, you know, what, what sort of things are we going to attack here? Um, and uh, and it, it's actually really interesting, the, the WooCommerce one, um, because I, I haven't been working with the WooCommerce team, but it's really interesting uh, what they've been doing because I've been following them. So short codes. So right now in WooCommerce, you can make a short code for a product, right? And it even has like a little short code builder thing, right? You know, which is pretty cool on some of those. They got little short code builders. Um, do you know what they did with the, so they actually made a Gutenberg block for this. And they basically made the, the Gutenberg block be the short code builder. So they just like switched it out and the short, and, and the Gutenberg block is now, it actually, um, generates the short code. Um, now eventually, after Gutenberg is in core, they may change that and to where it's no longer a short code per se, it might be something different. Um, but this is a way that the WooCommerce is gaining compatibility, backward compatibility, um, because it's still just the short code, that same short code that it's always been. So this is, um, this is something that if you have a plugin that you have your own short code, this is something you can do right now. And uh, whatever you're using for a short code builder, or even if you don't have one at all and you're just having people type it in, um, you can make a Gutenberg block that will output that short code. <clears throat> and that's already one step in the right direction. And the really cool part is, later on after Gutenberg is in core, you won't need that short code anymore. You could actually no longer generate the short code and you could just generate something else instead. And, and the block could be the same. Yes. So I don't have any uh, experience with the Visual Composer plugin, but um, the question was how, how does Gutenberg compare with the Visual Composer? But I'm guessing uh, it's it's a sort of page builder rearranger sort of thing. Um, I do know um, f from what I've I've seen and heard of podcasts and things. I, um, for instance, I think Beaver Builder is actually working with Gutenberg. You know, and they're in integrating their stuff into Gutenberg. And so I would expect it's probably similar to that. Um, I'm not sure where the overlap, I'm sure that there is some overlap between what Gutenberg does and what that does. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing that there's enough unique functionality that they uh, still do. Um, and so maybe part of that they could use Gutenberg to, to take over some of the more basic stuff and then handle the rest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I. So the question was, uh, you know, how do we deal with new projects um, that that may want to use Gutenberg or the existing page builder? I would say talk to your page builder um, or look at in some information, see if they've already posted something about them working with Gutenberg. Because I know, like like I said, Beer Builder, they have. They've been very uh, very vocal. They've been very involved. Um, and so you know, check with them and see, you know, and say, hey, what's your Gutenberg strategy? You know, what should I do um, with that? I think that. Would probably be the best way forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of that stuff should be compatible, but again, I would definitely test it. I mean, Gutenberg has been made with compatibility in mind as much as possible, um, but we do have a lot of legacy to deal with, and, and sometimes things are handled in ways that are not expected, right? And, and it's really difficult to sort of get a lasso around them and pull them all in. So, um, you know, if they're doing some stuff that's, that's a little bit more out there, it can be really difficult to support. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I would definitely, if, if you depend heavily on, uh, especially anything like a page builder or a theme that, that heavily modifies the content of your posts or, you know, or anything like that, or, uh, you know, or plugins, um, you know, check and see what their what their Gutenberg strategy is, um, because I can tell you that all of the major ones out there have been either they've come up with a strategy or they're working on it right now. We have another question. All right. So, um, so yeah, short codes are the easiest one. I think that one's kind of the gimme. Um, but then uh, also meta boxes. Now there has been some work in Gutenberg to actually render existing meta boxes. 
Um, and it's, I'll be honest, it's a little bit messy, but it's, and it's, it's a little bit, it's a workaround, right? Um, but a lot of what we have in Metaboxes can be done with Gutenberg. Um, also, yes? So Metaboxes are, are um, it's probably one of the easiest ways to add additional functionality to a certain post type. Um, if you've seen like a little box on the right side of something of your editor uh, that has something different there, that's that's usually a Metabox. Yeah. Um, so then, other than that, is theme content. And actually, I have a a, a good example for this. So. I was doing some testing. Uh, actually, this is one on, uh, at Automatic, everybody in the company goes on a one-week support rotation. And so this is when I was doing support for our customers, for WooCommerce customers. Um, and somebody had an issue with the storefront theme. They wanted to, so if you, the storefront theme is the uh, recommended theme for a WooCommerce site. Um, but it also creates sort of a home page with like a bunch of sections on the front of, you know, hey, these are new products, these are best selling products, that sort of, and they wanted to customize that part. And I hadn't done a lot with this plugin or with this theme, but I looked at it, you know, and I saw it on the main index page, and I was like, okay. So I go to the index page to edit, blank, right? And I, and I go to the customizer, and I look around in the theme customizer, I don't see a single option for any of this stuff for these sections in there. Like, oh my gosh, this thing is like hard coded in there and there's no way for me to get rid of it, right? And so I actually told this, uh, I, I replied back on, on this support ticket and I said, I'm sorry, I can't find a way to do this um, without, you know, doing some CSS to hide it or, you know, do whatever. And, and they weren't ready for that. Um, and then one of my coworkers said, oh, well, you just install this other plugin and then that gets rid of your, I'm like, come on, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta install a plugin to suppress another plug a theme and it starts getting really messy. But imagine this, so um, what the storefront theme could be with Gutenberg is um, w there's a concept called templates and you can actually make a template for any page or any post type or something like that. And um, so imagine if you installed the storefront theme and instead of hard coding these sections in that front page, if each section was a Gutenberg block, right? You know, this is your new purchases block and maybe it has some little options on the right side and hey, display three items or five items or you know, whatever, right? Um, and then that and the other sections are put in as Gutenberg blocks in a template for your index page, right? And so now you install that theme, it installs that template, and it shows up on your page. And now, if you go to edit your index page, it's not blank anymore. You actually see those blocks, you can change them, change the order of them, move them around, delete them if you want, and if you want to put them back in, they're still there in the list of blocks. You can add them back in, or you can put them on another page. So, you know, these are the sorts of things that I'm talking about. These are the things that actually get me really excited about something like this, because I, it's super frustrating to me when I install a theme, especially themes, and now I have this content and layout on my page that I have no control over whatsoever. I mean, it's, it's really frustrating to me. And so this, um, I think Gutenberg has the uh, possibility to bring that control back to the user, to the admin of that site in this way. So, any questions or comments? Excited elation. <laughs> um, all right, so um, yeah, same thing with uh, any other magic PHP, you know, that comes from plugins or themes or whatever. It's sa the same sort of thing. Um, but yeah, then the, the, the page templates are what we just talked about. So, um, but if you, some of you may, may already be thinking, okay, so where is this going, right? Because this is just all the editor. Where else are we going to take this? How far are we going to take it? And um, you know, some of this stuff uh, gets pretty interesting because you can implement custom plugin behavior in these blocks, right? And you can have it work together. Um, the bottom item there I've got is uh, trading post meta for API calls. So for a lot of these things, um, so these do use front end code on, on the site. You're using JavaScript and uh, it actually uses React on the back end, but we've ha we have our own API on top of it. Um, and uh, you can get data through API calls very easily, extremely easily, um, on your on your Gutenberg controls and components. And uh, where this gets really interesting is, we can start to shift some of our code. Now this is a little bit more technical here, but we can start dealing with our data through the API more so than directly through post meta calls on 
the server. And where this gets really interesting and, and really, uh, really exciting for me is, um, number one, if you ever wanted to write a mobile app, you've already got an API for it, right? And you're using the data for that. If you ever wanted to change how you implement that API, you can do that now without breaking your meta boxes and your other stuff, right? You know, because these post meta uh, mo meta boxes depend on post meta. You know, um, they depend on on the database structures in there uh, most of the time, and uh, you know, you, you can decouple that. Um, in WooCommerce, this is something that we've had to really work on, um, and this is a, a little bit more of an advanced example, so I'll keep it short. But um, in WooCommerce, um, we have situations. We have customers that are pulling in. Uh, you know, we have people who are using WooCommerce, and they're taking in. 50,000 orders a year, which is, you know, you got a store, 50,000 orders in a year, it's, not, it's, it's in the realm of possibility, that's, that's not unreasonable. But if you think about it, depending on what extensions for WooCommerce you have installed, I thought you could have up to about 20 post-meta fields on each order. I've, I've been told 50 <coughs> post-meta fields. Now, this is the technical part, each one of those post-meta post fields is a row in a database. So if you have 50 times one order, that times 50,000, that is how many rows in that post meta table you have, and that's just for orders. And that really starts to slow down your performance on your, on your, uh, on your site, on your database, on page loads and everything else, right? Um, and so being able to decouple how you get that data and how it's stored becomes very important. And, and we've taken steps uh, you know, through CRUD objects and stuff in WooCommerce, but where that ties back to this is the more you can use API calls for your data, the more options you have like this. So someday in the future, if you're hitting hard performance problems, you can change how that API endpoint is implemented and not call PostMeta, call something else, right? And that's okay, as long as you don't have other things depending on that PostMeta to be there, right? So. That's, uh, that's all for the technical stuff <laughs> for now. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see, so an, uh, template editing, and um, this goes to like theme editing and stuff. So the next target for Gutenberg is going to be the customizer. Um, if, if you've been hearing about it, if you've been listening in, you probably heard some mentions of the customizer, and, and that's the next, uh, the next part. Um, and that, that can be really interesting because it, it'll allow exactly these sorts of things that I was just talking about, you know, with the with the storefront and the sections and all of that sort of thing. You know, uh, so much of this can be using Gutenberg blocks in the customizer, and you can be setting up those templates in that customizer. Yes. Mm. So um, the question I'm repeating for the camera here. Um, so the the question was, uh, what about all of the CSS and and uh, that's generated from these Gutenberg blocks, and how does that fit into the theme and the customizer? Um, and so um, one thing that helps is each Gutenberg block or you know each each thing that you write, it has two different operations for visibility. Um, one is the edit function, and then one is the save function. Right, and so for the simplest example, we'll use uh, like an anchor link, like a just a link on your page, right? So the anchor link, the edit, might render a like a React text box thing that you can type into, right? And it might actually have some validation to make sure that it's a valid URL and stuff like that. And then it has a little button, right? You know, to hit save, and then it, you know it's there. Um, However, the save function of it is actually what is generated and saved to your post. And so the save would actually output an ahref tag just like normal, right? Um, and so um, as far as like a lot of these Gutenberg blocks, um, they actually have like an extra little class definition thing on that, on that, um, uh, on the far right. I don't think you could see it on an example that I showed. Um, Let's see. So if I go here, yeah, I don't know if you can see this uh, additional CSS class. And so 
if you did, if you were laying this stuff out and you wanted to do something special here, you could add the CSS class. However, um, when this renders, if it's a custom Gutenberg block, it's probably already putting out a CSS class for that type of block output. And then so that will play nicely with the theme or um, you know, with whatever else manipulates that CSS class. There are some columns. Um, it's kind of at the component level, though, because um, uh, what I can do is I can add, I can actually add a uh, text columns. Here we go. All right, and so I can actually. All right, so, and, and so this block itself. Um, will have, um, so most likely if you wanted to do something like this on your own, what you would do is your plugin would have some partnering CSS that it would enqueue along with your Gutenberg block, right? And so your Gutenberg block would define the class for this. Um, and then your CSS would do whatever, uh, whatever layout stuff you want to do to make those columns. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I think for each block, what it cares about is just its own block stuff, right? And so any CSS that you write for that block is just going to be that, and it's going to say, hey, for this block, here are my breakpoints, right? And you know, and maybe even have that as an option. Um, it could be possible as well. Um, and so you, you have those breakpoints for that. And then if you put that in a larger container that constrains it even more, then yeah, it's going to fire off its breakpoints um, just the same. I know, how is this? Um, I'm curious if you think that this is different than just like a normal. I mean, it, I think these things come up a lot in even just normal web application development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I th it's a tough. Um, I, I think any time that you start dealing with several containers of components and CSS, it it gets difficult no matter what. Especially if if you don't have just one piece of uh, of code to rule it all. Um, and, and granted, the themes will help a bit, um, but I I think what can really happen is we can start to push some of the individual post layout work down into the posts. And then we can start to let the themes worry about kind of the overall look and feel and sizing and that sort of thing. So, you know, the theme's not going to be concerned about, well, I have a really narrow column here. The theme's going to say, um, I'm going to make sure that my posts have this much width, right? The whole thing. All right, so customizing uh, Gutenberg via themes. Um, I think what's going to happen is um, a lot of these blocks do already have classes associated with them. And especially like the standard blocks, I could see themes hooking onto those CSS classes. Right, so if you have a paragraph, it's going to do this. And if you have a header, it's going to do that. Um, but I, I, it's not so different from what themes have already been doing. Uh, quite a bit, maybe it actually gives it more options, right? Because I think we're going to have more CSS classes to hook things onto with your theme and perhaps being a little bit more discriminatory about them and being able to say it's only for 
paragraphs, right? Or it's only for these headers, or it's only for this type of component um, on there. Or, yeah, I could even see themes where maybe they allow you to, you know, put in your CSS class that this thing affects, right? And so you can type in your CSS class for only the paragraphs that you want styled a certain way on your components and then your theme will automatically grab that class. You know, that's another option as well. I think there's a potential for a better cooperation between the edit, the, the editable content and the theme here. So does that answer your question? All right, good. Yes? What's the current target date for five? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know that there is one set. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! I think it, I think it's gonna be uh, yeah I th yeah. Um, what's the progress on nested blocks? Ooh, I'm glad you asked. Um, so nested blocks, actually, I don't know if you can see this right now. So here's an example: columns right there, right? And so it does say experimental. I have run into a couple little issues with it. This is definitely going to be the way that it's going to go. And actually, I'm super excited about this. Um, so right now, when you look at uh, a Gutenberg editor, it's, it's handled as an array of blocks, right? Just a, a single from top to bottom, right? Um, I see that changing. Um, as soon as we really start going nested on these blocks, and a post is going to be one block, right? A post block, and you nest stuff inside it, and it's going to be, instead of being a, a, a single array, it's going to be more like a tree. How does that impact design on the front end? Like, let's say you have some structured data on the front end, or you're trying to design around responsive, and you get your blocks all pretty and gorge, and then, like, how does that interact with your... Because it looks like a table, and it really scares me when you see that. Does that make mm. sense? Like how, is, how are, are you thinking about nested blocks in terms of responsiveness? I think you have to be careful with, uh, you know, with what you're trying to go for, just like anything else. Um, I mean, what's a grid layout but a table, right? Um, so, I mean, it, it, most grids don't look like a table because care is taken to not go overboard with them, sure. right? Just because you have seven columns doesn't mean you're going to use them all. Um, so, uh, you know, I think the same sort of thing here. Um, with anything else, it's going to take some design restraint um, and, and people who care. Um, I guess the thing that I'm excited about is it gives people a chance who maybe don't know CSS to, to give it a try, you know, and start laying out and, and start playing with layout stuff here. I mean, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that they're going to get it perfect, that's for sure. Um, there, there, are going to be some, there are going to be some ugly WordPress sites out there, but I mean, there are some ugly words for sites out there right now. So, <laughs> um, yeah. I have one more follow-up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in in that sense, as you start creating page templates with blocks in them, you can the possibility would exist then to essentially make blocks required or sticky in specific places. You can. Yeah, so you, right now, um, and actually right now, I believe it, it's supported in master in the Gutenberg right now. Um, you can, through a plugin, define a custom post type, and you can define a template for that custom post type. Super cool. If you haven't seen Matias Ventura's um, video at uh, WordCamp US this last year in Nashville, he goes over it, and he goes over, um, hey, I have a custom post type of book, you know, and uh, it has a template with a picture and an ISBN <coughs> you know, number, place, and you know, all this other stuff that is very pertinent to books, right? Um, and, and those are, uh, you can lock that template down, you can make sure, you know, nothing else can be added or removed, or you can just, you know, say, well, things can be moved around, but they have to stay there, stuff like that. I think we're going to see more and more of that. So, any questions before we move on? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think it depends on the block. Um, I mean, in general, we, there are different styles for the, I mean, it's different HTML output, right, um, for, the, for the editable view and for the saved view. I mean, those are two separate pieces of HTML. So I guess, in general, it's not the same CSS running in both. Um, however, care has been taken, as you can see, you know, a lot of these things look like they would look on the front page. 
So, and actually, uh, when it comes to the customizer, that's probably going to be even more so. Questions? Any more? Moving on? All right. So, um, here, here's where it gets really interesting. So, the future of WP Admin. So, if we take this past, um, potentially, I mean, we've got the editor now. We're talking about the customizer. Um, as someone who has worked on a lot of WP Admin code for WooCommerce and other things, um, this is where I get pretty excited. But, um, yeah, this is my speculation. <laughs> so I don't, this is not authoritative. Although I have seen, uh, like Matthias uh, put out a post, and he already talked about some of this stuff too. So uh, at the core of this, we've got our blocks, right? And we've got that today. But where else can we go with this? So we've got some UI elements already. We've got headers. We've got, um, you know, we've got uh, columns. We've got uh, images. We've got all this other stuff. Not only that, but we also have an editor for each of those, right? You know, we we only we not only have an an image that we can render on here, but if I click on this, I can actually change what that image is, right? I can turn it into a gallery. I can, you know. Um, I can change what image I'm, you know, I can upload another image for that. So I have an image editor right here. Um, how cool would it be if I could use this when I'm editing my product in WooCommerce and WP Admin? So not in the editor, right? Because there's a separate page for this. Um, or or uh, categories, right? You know, I mean, there are WP Admin pages that are not like the custom post type pages or anything like that. They're actually just straight up we're making our own WP admin page, right? Um, how cool would it be to be able to incorporate some of this block functionality into there? So, um, theme content, we've already talked about the customizer. Um, I don't think anything definitive has come out of that just yet, um, but I think it's a safe bet to say the customizer will see some more integration with Gutenberg. Um, probably not with the initial release, but it'll, it'll be out there. Uh, REST API, um, just like we talked. Um, I think there, there's a lot of power between the Gutenberg blocks and the API um, because the Gutenberg blocks give us a uniform way to talk about an image gallery or an image and where it should be on the page and you know, how, we, how we show that or text, you know, what color should it be, what font, all of that sort of stuff. We can edit all of those things. It kind of gives us a common language across a lot of different places. Um, and then the REST API is just how we fulfill that on the back end. And we've already talked about the advantages of abstraction of that API. So there's some real advantages to us going and, and getting our data from the API rather than doing it in PHP code from uh, PostMedical. Um, the admin UI itself. So. Um, uh, a couple months ago, just to try it out, I actually rendered um, a Gutenberg block on an admin page outside of the editor. There was no editor involved here whatsoever. And I got a list of categories um, from the API. Super easy. Oh my gosh, it was so easy. And uh, pulled that data in, rendered a bunch of rows for each, you know, one row for each category. And it was super cool and it was just all on one admin page. Um, and so that, that gets really interesting is if we can use these Gutenberg blocks to actually render admin UI, we could potentially make, uh, make our lives a lot easier as plugin developers. So UI extensibility. So um, <clears throat> some of these components that we've got within Gutenberg, um, they have a slot fill mechanism that is available to us. And so uh, Again, for example, on a product page, if I wanted an extra play page for some custom fields in there, I could actually just render a slot component right there. And I register that. And then something else can come by and say, hey, I've got custom uh, fields for a product. And so they present those. And then when that plugin gets installed, now those fill in that slot. And the really cool part about it is the main product page code gets to decide where those show up. Right? They get to decide how they are presented, or at least contains them. Um, and so I think that's, uh, that's really interesting as well. <coughs> it's um, a, a little bit more, uh, I think it's potentially a lot better for the user. Um, 
especially for WooCommerce, since we have so many extensions and we have plugins piled on top of plugins, right? You know, we've got the WooCommerce plugin, and then we've got other plugins that extend that plugin. And I'm pretty, actually, I know we already have plugins that extend that plugin, which extends that plugin, right? We're going three levels deep on this stuff. And having a little bit of control on, you know, being able to, to lasso these things and say, okay, you're going to exist in this little box. You're not going to take over, take over the whole page, um, I think is uh, pretty helpful, especially for our users. So, um, the parts that I'm really excited about, so with Gutenberg uh, users, um, so any, any blocks that you get installed, the users can use. And they don't have to write code to do it, they don't have to write CSS, they just move them around, they tweak them, add them, however they want. Uh, they get to control the layout of their pages and, and their content, they get, to, they get a, a higher degree of control of their site without having to write code. Um, and they get to d tweak all those little display options that normally you would have to know CSS to do. Um, theme authors. So theme authors can get some benefits from here as well. Um, so as a theme author, you can provide blocks that then the users can customize through the customizer or elsewhere. Um, you can provide the default templates, the, those default templates uh, for how things should look. Um, you know, if, like the storefront index page, right? Um, and uh, the flexibility that you can provide because those users can go with the template that you gave them or they can completely revamp it or they could take parts of that template and implement them somewhere else. Yeah? What if we don't want them to? Let's say if we're preserving a brand. Okay. Um, would there potentially be ways to lock that down to where they could not? Yes, yeah, you can lock down a template. Um, right now, the, the controls are not very fine-grained. It's either um, you can't add and remove anything, but you can still rearrange stuff, or you can't do anything. You know, it's, it, but I think we're looking at, we'll eventually make that a lot more fine-grained of a control uh, to where like, hey, these can't be moved, but the rest can be moved, or you know, stuff like that. Um, but even right now, those templates can be locked down. So if you're thinking about making a child theme for a site, uh, that's very specific for a brand and you want those templates in, in there, you can lock those down. And uh, plugin authors. So uh, obviously the first thing plugin authors would be doing is uh, uh, providing some uh, blocks to be used, um, stuff that they may have hard coded in or done short codes or done meta boxes or you know whatever they've done, uh, you know the magic PHP code that nobody can see that still renders stuff um, can now be in a block, and people can choose to use it or not. Um, and then, uh, yeah, uh, plugins can use blocks from other plugins. So those plugins that extend other plugins, they can use blocks from those other plugins and their own stuff. And you can use the ones from the core set. In fact, you can even have some logic saying, well, if this is available, use it. If it's not, then don't. Um, and then, uh, yeah, if you have your block in your API, it covers all of the use cases that you would need um, from a UI perspective in WP Admin and then also on the front end. So, and that's it. So, any more questions? Yes? Yes. Yeah, it, it's going to take. Right. Right. So at some point, when when people upgrade their site to 5.0, uh, they will, at that point, see the Gutenberg editor instead of the classic editor at that point, if they do not have the classic editor in, uh, plugin installed. You can install that now, and then when 5.0 happens, nothing will happen. Yours will be the same. Um, this is why it's, it's important, I think, to test things out, especially if you have a site with a, 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 a theme that's doing a whole lot, um, or if you have a lot of plugins, a lot going on. I think it would definitely be good to try it out. Um, the, or, the Gutenberg team is still working through a lot of kinks right now, um, and so we're, they're iterating on this stuff right now. Um, so you may you may find something, and if you do, please report it. Um, so 
No, it'll just be the editor. Yeah, when you click, when you click edit post, if you edit the post, then it will just show the Gutenberg editor. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I think what they've um, started doing is they actually, if, if you have a post that is edited before Gutenberg was installed on there, it actually stores the content in there in a classic block, and it's treated a little bit differently than the rest of the blocks that are in there. So all of your existing posts, it'll say classic block and nothing else at first. So I think that's what, we're, that's what I've been observing lately. But for a while it'll be opt-in, right? It's until 5.0, yes. 5.0 is it, yeah. Uh, I mean, from everything that I've been told. I mean, I'm, I'm not the authority on this. But. All right, I think we got two more minutes. If you want your uh, question on video, now's the time. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So um, part of the automatic creed, uh, which is kind of our motto, it's, you know, kind of our, our vision and what we live by, part of that says I will not just work on what's assigned to me. And so this is me doing work on that's not just assigned to me. However, it's become more and more relevant um, to what we're trying to do in WooCommerce. And I think very quite possibly we could end up using some of these Gutenberg blocks for our new admin UI that we're uh, working on. Nothing definitive there, though. I can't, uh, you know, in fact, we, we don't even have a project kicked off on this, but we're, we're talking about it. Yes? Certainly. Yeah, yeah, actually, I think widgets would be another really good target for, uh, for blocks. Um, I mean, how great would it be if you just, uh, if, a, if a widget was a block, right, and a nested block at that, right, and you could put other stuff in there and rearrange it and then save it, and that's your widget. I don't think so. No, I think I think the very beginning it's going to you know replace some short codes. It's going to do some of the editor stuff, and that's that's probably step one. Oh no, I think the short codes themselves will be around. I think the short code builders will become blocks. I, that's where I think the best value is. Yeah, it, it is using React right now, um, and so I, that would be my recommendation. I, you could probably shoehorn some other stuff in there, um, but if you're looking to make a Gutenberg block, I think learning some React would definitely be uh, good to do. So um, much of the boilerplate for React is already fixed in there for you. Um, there's a Gutenberg examples repo that you can grab. If you just search for Gutenberg examples, it's, under, it's in GitHub under the WordPress organization. Look at the Gutenberg examples, and there's some really good examples there. So, mm -hmm. um, follow-up question to that. So, uh, is that going to be like a permanent thing, where it's like you have to react to that? It's not going to be PHP calls. Um, it's it's always going to be JavaScript because it has to be run on the front end. Um, there are other frameworks like Vue and you know some others that may be compatible with Gutenberg at some point, but we have uh, you know they've settled on the team has settled on. I say we, I'm not on this team, but the 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 Gutenberg team has settled on React for right now. So yeah, and that's like I've said, um, it's it's the path of least resistance. Like I said, you might be able to shoehorn something else in there, um, but um, especially when things are new, you want to do it the the way that it's recommended. So. I think I'm up on time. If anybody has any questions, um, please uh, you know, come up and talk to me. Um, I'll be around at the after party as well. Thank you. <laughs>